my name is Kirti. In this lecture, I talk about a very mysterious but interesting phenomenon in quantum mechanics that is quantum tunneling. So first we will try to understand this uh, weird phenomenon of quantum tunneling and at the end of the class, we will see how Heisenberg's uncertainty principle explains quantum tunneling. Okay. So we will try to understand quantum tunneling using a classical example of a ball and a hill. So this is a hill and this is a ball. You can consider it as your favorite ball, cricket ball or football. So you want this ball to surpass this hill and appear on this side. So when will it happen? It will happen only when this ball has sufficient energy to cross this hill, right? If the ball has less energy, if you are kicking this ball with less energy, which is not sufficient to cross this hill, then this ball will always roll back and it can never go to the other side of the hill, right? So ball, if, if this ball does not have enough energy to surpass this hill, this ball will never make it on the other side, right? So this is the classical thing, right? If, uh, suppose, even if this ball has less energy, suppose this ball has less energy, in spite of having less energy, if it had crossed the hill, that means it had violated the most fundamental law of universe, that is law of conservation of energy, right? Law of conservation of energy. This is also the first law of thermodynamics, by the way. So, in spite of having less energy, if this ball manages to cross this hill, that means there is a violation of law of conservation of energy. And in classical physics, there is anywhere in the universe, there is no violation of law of conservation of energy. Okay. So, all the particles obey this law. Therefore, this law is universal. Okay. This is very obvious. If this ball doesn't have enough energy to cross this hill, it will never make it on this side of the hill. And uh, if it has energy sufficient enough to cross this hill, it will go to the other side. Simple, right? Now, let us... Uh, Assume this same thing, I mean the same scenario in quantum mechanical world. So let me replace this ball with an electron in a quantum world. And let me replace this hill with a potential energy barrier. Okay. So now in the quantum world, so this was classical. Let me write it here, classical. So, in classical physics, we saw this ball is not going to appear on this side uh, until it has sufficient energy to cross the hill, right? In quantum mechanical world or in the quantum world, we are replacing this ball with an electron and this hill with a potential energy barrier. Potential energy barrier. Okay, first we will try to talk about what is this potential energy barrier and how do we create it, okay? So let us spend some uh, 5 to 6 minutes to understand potential energy barrier. Suppose this is the electron and this electron is a free electron. So it is not under the influence of any other particle. It is free to move. And this electron, suppose it has only 1 degree of freedom. That means it can move only in one direction. Assume that it can move only along a line. So it can go from this point to, the, the, to this point freely. And it is not under the influence of any charge. Okay. So when it is not under the influence of any other particle, it can move freely from this end to, the, to this end. Right. Now what will I do? I will put an electron here. In the vicinity of this path of the electron, I am putting an ele other electron. Okay, let us call this electron number 2. So, when this electron tries to move this side, when, it, when this electron 1 comes in the vicinity of electron 2, then there will be repulsions between electron 1 and electron 2, right? Because we know that light charges repel each other. So, this will go back. Now there is a barrier.
barrier for this electron to go from this point to this point, right? So we have created a potential energy barrier in the way of this electron, okay? This is one example of uh, how we create a potential energy barrier. There are various methods, but this was a simple method to understand. So I have uh, described this one, okay? So this is how we create a potential energy barrier by bringing one charge under the influence of any other charge, okay? Okay, when can this electron go to the other side? Only if it has sufficient energy to overcome the repulsions by this electron, okay? If it has sufficient kinetic energy so that it overcomes the repulsions by this electron, so kinetic energy is greater than repulsive forces, only then this electron can go to the other end, okay? So this is how we create potential energy barrier. Okay, in classical physics, we saw that this ball will never go on the other side of the hill if it has less energy. Okay, if it has less energy than required to surpass this hill. Okay, but in quantum mechanics, even if the electron has less energy to cross this potential energy barrier, even if it has less energy than this potential energy barrier, even then you can see that there are some chances for this electron to appear on this side. Okay. So the probability of this electron going to the other side of this potential energy barrier is not zero. So this probability is not equal to zero. Obviously the probability is less, very less, but it is not equal to zero. So it happens that the electron crosses the potential energy barrier and appears on this side. But the electron has less energy. Okay, right? This electron has less energy to cross the potential energy barrier even then it appears on this side. So, it seems like the electron is making a tunnel through this barrier and coming to the other side of the barrier. Okay, so it appears like this. Therefore, it is called Quantum tunneling, okay? Here you can ask me an important question and that is, if this electron has less energy than the energy required to cross this barrier, then how is this electron coming to the other side, right? So this energy, uh, electron has less energy than it is required to cross this barrier, right? In spite of that, this electron is going to the other side of the barrier, and you can ask me, is this not the violation of law of conservation of energy? Violation of law of conservation of energy. It looks like the electron has less energy, but it is creating some energy and uh, appearing to the other side, right? But we know that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. So here it looks like the law, uh, violation of law of conservation of energy, but actually... There is no violation of law of conservation of energy either in the classical or in the quantum world, okay? So this law is very universal. Law of conservation of energy is universal in nature and it is applied everywhere in the universe and it is till now there is no uh, evidences for the violation of law of conservation of energy on this earth or probably in this universe, okay? So law of conservation of energy is not violated. Then how is this electron coming to the other side? So here we have missed one important thing that is electron is not a particle. It also has a wave nature. So unlike this ball, so this ball is a particle but electron since it is, uh, since it has very less mass, it also behaves as a wave and we know that every wave has something called wave function associated with it, okay? This electron has a wave function associated with it and we'll talk about this psi in some other class in detail. So for now, just try to uh, know that the electron or any wave has wave function associated with it 
and this wave function holds all the information about the state of the electron okay and there is some interesting thing that is psi into psi star so it tells you the probability of finding an electron at any place okay so this is the wave function and the product, uh, product of psi and psi star gives you the probability or the chance of finding electron at any place okay so now we know that this electron is not a particle it is behaving as a wave and it has a wave function psi and this wave function when this electron approaches to the barrier the wave function decreases exponentially okay but it suddenly does not go to zero as it hits the barrier it suddenly does not go to zero because it is a wave and the wave function decreases exponentially and if this wave function manages to sustain in this barrier and if it reaches the boundary there is a chance that it crosses the boundary and again builds up outside the barrier okay i hope you have understood so the wave function does not directly go to the go to zero as the electron hits the barrier it decreases slowly sorry not slowly but it decreases exponentially and suppose if this wave function manages to have some value non zero value if this wave function does not die down completely inside the barrier then there is a chance that this wave function rises outside this barrier and there is a probability of finding the electron here okay i hope you have understood electron is not it is not a particle it is a wave so the wave function does not die down completely so if the wave function does not die down completely in the barrier there is a chance that this wave function crosses the barrier and appears on the other side of the barrier so it makes so this thing makes it possible for the electron to appear on the other side of the potential energy barrier even if it has less energy than the potential energy barrier so this phenomenon is called quantum tunneling so now we will see how heisenberg uh, tried to justify this quantum uh, tunneling using his principle of uncertainty okay so according to heisenberg's uncertainty principle what we see is uncertainty in position and uncertainty in momentum the product of uncertainty in position and momentum is greater than h cross over 2 so this is our famous heisenberg's uncertainty principle so using this principle he justified quantum tunneling let us see how suppose if this delta x uncertainty in position becomes very less or approaches zero what happens at the time delta px rises up right so delta there is huge uncertainty in momentum when the uncertainty in position becomes less so if there is huge uncertainty in momentum then momentum can take large range or large set of values momentum can take any value in this set okay and we know that momentum is analogous to energy right if momentum has uh, large Uh, range of values possible then energy will also have large range of values possible right so if at some energy at some point of time if the energy of the electron is such that it is greater than the potential energy barrier in this range then the electron can pass to the barrier right so this is how heisenberg explained this quantum tunneling using his famous uncertainty principle okay okay let me repeat it again so heisenberg's uncertainty principle says the product of uncertainty in position and momentum is greater than or equal to h cross over 2 and if the uncertainty in position decreases uncertainty in momentum rises up Uh, what does it mean by rising up of uncertainty in momentum that means momentum can take huge uh, momentum can take a value between 
a large range huge range so if momentum can take any value between a large range of values then energy can also take any value between a large set of values or large range of values so at some point the energy might be greater than the potential energy barrier and at that time the electron can cross this barrier okay so this is how heisenberg explain this uh, quantum tunneling using his uncertainty principle now we will see yeah we will see one more important thing that is factors affecting quantum tunneling factors affecting quantum What is the first factor that affects quantum tunneling? We can clearly see the mass of the particle affects quantum tunneling because lower is the mass, higher is the wave nature, then higher will the probability of the particle to appear on the other side of the barrier. So mass of the particle affects quantum tunneling. So the first factor is mass. So lower the mass of the particle, higher will be the probability of quantum tunneling. Okay. Lower mass, higher probability. Okay. Probability of what? Quantum tunneling. And what could be the second factor that affect quantum tunneling? The potential energy barrier height. Okay. Higher is the potential energy barrier. Lower will be the probability of quantum tunneling. Right. Potential energy barrier height or you can call it height of potential energy barrier. So this is the second factor. So higher is the potential energy barrier, lower will be the tunneling probability. And the third factor that affects quantum tunneling is the width of the potential energy barrier. So this width decides if psi can uh, sustain in the barrier or not. If psi, sorry, if the width is large, this wave function will die down to zero and there is less chance that the wave function goes to the other side of the barrier. So width of the barrier is very important. So width of the barrier also affects quantum tunneling. So narrower is the barrier width more probably more probable is the quantum tunneling okay so narrow potential energy barriers are preferred for quantum tunneling okay narrow potential energy barriers. so you might think that this quantum tunneling is very weird phenomenon and it must be imaginary. But actually it is not imaginary, it is happening and there are solid proofs of quantum tunneling. So let us see, I will tell you at least three consequences or uh, three uh, situations in which this quantum tunneling phenomenon is happening and then I think you can build up some trust over this weird phenomenon. Okay. So the first thing is nuclear fusion reaction. So you all might have heard about these reactions. So this reaction is happening in sun continuously so that sun can keep the uh, at least earth alive. Okay. So how do this nuclear fusion reactions happen? So two nuclei have to come closer to each other for these reactions to happen. Right. So when they come closer to each other, there must be repulsion, this potential energy barrier of repulsions, right? In spite of the potential energy barrier, the nuclear fusion reactions are possible. That means this is possible only because of this quantum tunneling, okay? And the second practical application of quantum tunneling is scanning tunneling microscope. So scanning tunneling microscope this is used to scan the surface, surface of the uh, material to the atomic level. Okay. Scanning tunneling microscope. 
and this uh, i think chemist can relate to this third example that is uh, you all might have heard about ammonia if you are a chemist you know how what is ammonia it is nh3 and it has pyramidal shape and this nitrogen has one lone pair over it now we know that this ammonia undergoes inversion and its inverted form exists in equilibrium with this molecule okay so this is the sorry this is the inverted ammonia so for this ammonia to convert it into the this inverted form it has to go through this state or this intermediate i won't call it intermediate i'll call it transition state so this ammonia has to go through this state where all the nitrogens sorry all the hydrogens and this nitrogen is in one plane but this has this state is very unstable and it has highest energy it has very high energy so we know that all the molecules they try to attain stability by lowering their energy right then how is it possible that this molecule comes to this state inverted state via this potential energy barrier or transition state which has higher energy right it will not prefer to come to this state via this transition energy sorry via this uh, transition state right so there is some tunneling happening here also so it is possible only because of the quantum tunneling so these hydrogens are very small atoms they also have the ability of uh, tunneling through the potential energy barriers okay so if this uh, ammonia has to con uh, convert to this inverted state via this transition state then it is not possible it is possible only through the tunneling okay so i hope we have covered important thing about this quantum tunneling and if you have any doubt you can post in the comment section i'll try to answer them okay thank you so much see you in the next class